your body is a complex system a lot like a car. And since most of us aren't mechanics, we need our cars to tell us when something's going wrong before disaster strikes. And when that check engine light comes on, we know that if we don't take the car into the mechanic, we run the risk of a significant repair bill down the road, or worst case, getting stranded by the side of the road with a completely inoperable hunk of metal smoking on the shoulder. Now, your body has a check engine light as well, and if we don't act appropriately when that check engine light comes on, we run the risk of significant health problems later in life. And the problem is that most doctors don't recognize that check engine light for what it is, and it's costing you down the road. Now, every time you go to the doctor, one of the first things we do is check your blood pressure. It doesn't matter whether you're coming in for a toenail infection or a sore throat or your annual physical, you're going to notice the first thing we do is throw a blood pressure cuff on you. And the reason is that we call hypertension the silent killer. It's completely asymptomatic. So when your blood pressure goes up, you wouldn't know it unless we go ahead and check it. And the problem is that once we check it, we start treating it like a disease. You end up taking some medication and then we get more medication and more medication. And before you know it, 10, 20 years down the road, you're on multiple medications for high blood pressure and you're starting to see those downstream effects like a higher risk of heart attack, of stroke, of heart disease, of kidney disease, all because the body's starting to deteriorate over time. The problem is that we're treating high blood pressure like a disease, prescribing medications instead of recognizing it for the engine warning light that it truly is, which is evidence of an underlying problem that we're not addressing. Think how crazy it would be if you took your car to the mechanic and they just turned off your engine warning light. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised if you went back to the mechanic two weeks later and the engine warning lights back on again and they turn it off and then it goes back on again because we're not fixing the underlying problem. And that's what a lot of us face when we go to the doctor and we get treated for high blood pressure. Then we come back six months or a year later and we need to increase the dose. We go from 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams or we add that second medication or a combination pill. If we don't fix the underlying problem, then the disease just keeps getting worse. So what is this engine warning light really telling us? What's the underlying problem that we have to address if our blood pressure is elevated? Well, the underlying cause of hypertension has been researched for years, and there's a network of researchers right now today around the world at top institutions like Vanderbilt and Hopkins and others around the world actually exploring the molecular mechanisms of how high blood pressure is elevated. And it all comes down to one thing, potassium. There is significant evidence published over the past 10 years showing us that there is what these researchers call the potassium switch for high blood pressure, that decreased potassium in the diet, which most of us are guilty of, runs the risk of upregulating certain hormones like renin and enzymes like the sodium chloride co-transporter in the kidney that are causative in the development of high blood pressure. And since high blood pressure is evidence of potassium deficiency, these researchers and others like them have shown conclusively that increasing potassium in the diet can turn off hypertension like a switch. And the beauty of this is that it can obviate the need for a lot of these medications that we're taking for hypertension and also significantly reduce your risk of all of these kind of unhealthy aging consequences that we face as we get older. I'm talking about heart disease, kidney disease, stroke, and even all-cause mortality, death from any cause. All of these are significantly reduced when we increase potassium in the diet, and the reason is that we are fixing the underlying cause. If we're chronically deficient in one of the body's most important minerals, then the damage is just going to accumulate over time. Now, the unfortunate thing is that when we look at top research like this, most of it is geared towards drug development. You know, researchers are out there trying to figure out how to mimic the effect of potassium in the diet by triggering these pathways with medications and drugs but not in helping you to get there through diet or supplementation such that you can actually avoid this problem and not have to take all these extra medications. The evidence is pretty clear. 98% of adults are deficient in potassium relative to the levels that would actually flip this switch and turn off high blood pressure. And over time, most of us end up with hypertension with over three quarters of the population being diagnosed with hypertension at some point in their life, 
with that incidence increasing with age. Now, there's a reason why I'm so passionate about this problem. It's because I developed hypertension when I was just in my late 30s. And it was only by doing this research and increasing my dietary potassium that I was able to bring my blood pressure back into the normal range without medications and keep it there for the last 10, 15 years or so. And since that time, I've seen plenty of people make the same changes that I made in my own diet, increasing the amount of potassium through diet or supplementation and seeing their blood pressure come down as a result. So if your engine warning light is going on and your blood pressure is elevated and you don't want to be on this roller coaster of taking medications for the rest of your life, what should you do? Well, first off, it's important to recognize that no matter how healthy of an eater you are, there is an overwhelming probability that you're not getting enough potassium to meaningfully affect your blood pressure. In a survey of 12,000 Americans, 98% of them didn't get the levels of potassium necessary to control blood pressure. And what are the levels that I'm talking about? 4,700 milligrams daily is the FDA recommended and National Kidney Foundation recommended dose of potassium. And the American College of Cardiology increases that to as high as 5,000 milligrams of potassium daily. Now, the average American and actually the average person worldwide, multiple studies have shown this, gets about 23 to 2,500 milligrams of potassium daily. So we're about halfway to the goal with, again, only a tiny fraction of the population getting the levels of potassium necessary to avoid disease. Now, the obvious answer here is to increase the amount of potassium in your diet, and you can do that by adding high potassium foods. I've done a couple of videos on food. I'll leave some link in the description. Also, I'll leave a link for my meal plan. So I've got a free download meal plan and book. You can use that to learn more about the power of potassium and add more high potassium foods to your diet. And when it comes to potassium supplementation, we're really looking at getting a dose of 500 to 1,000 milligrams of potassium per serving from our supplements. And that can be hard to come by. Most supplements only offer about 99 milligrams of potassium per serving. So if we're thinking about bridging that gap of 2,500 milligrams to 5,000 milligrams, you've got a long way to go. And I like to get some of that from diet, but also use supplements when I feel like I'm not going to hit those targets. I'll leave some links in the description where you can find high potassium supplements along with some discounts for those supplements so you can put them to use in your own life. And of course, talk to your doctor before making any changes to your diet or supplementation, especially if you're taking certain blood pressure medications that may interfere with potassium metabolism. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.